together on a similar call, uh, a Zoom call, um, with another brother called Shane Deegan, who has um, got, gathered a, a group of people together um, with some, an, some evangelistic um, uh, aims. And uh, so I first met Reuben on there. And then out of that, I uh, sent him a Facebook uh, friend request and he graciously accepted that. And then I started watching some of his uh, Facebook live posts. And as I was watching those, I was really inspired by what he was saying. And so I, uh, you know, made a few comments on those. And, um, and then I heard about what uh, the kingdom what was the group called? What's your group called again, Ruben? Um, uh, ABN, Kingdom Business Network. Yeah, Kingdom Business. I heard a little bit about what they were doing and I knew, I heard that you guys were meeting regularly uh, once a month and I kind of felt like, oh, I'd like to be part of that. But then I realised that it wasn't going to be that easy being in Adelaide. And, um, and then I, on one of his posts, I said, well, why don't we do a webinar? And I believe somebody else had all actually mentioned that. And so that's really how this has come about is um, just, I think it's actually what the Lord is wanting to do to actually make this uh, a broader thing than, um, than, than, than being limited by a locality. Amen. And uh, so that's really how I guess this came about. Mm. Over to you, Reuben. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, that was great. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, so look, I think we we got together today just to look at how do we facilitate the things that, the, that God has given us from a financial point of view. So I think I know most of us here, um, I think we all can stay from that basis that God does bless us financially and it is for propelling the gospel forward, but it's also for us living as well. And the, the, one of the keys, we talk about financial freedom all the time. And how many of you have heard of financial freedom? Because you're on camera, if you put your hand up, I can kind of see you guys. But you've all heard of financial freedom. And we've all talked about the idea of how do I get financial freedom? And uh, so one of the keys that I want to talk about tonight is what we call economic independence. So I retired at the age of 36 into economic independence. And what that simply means is money doesn't determine what I do. Uh, because for too long, we've been determining what we do for God and even for what God has called us to do. And, and that includes looking after our family and our career and everything else that we do. Uh, but we've determined it around this thing called money. Instead of looking at the fact that we can do what we've been called to do regardless of money. And for the last, I'm, I'm going to be 41 this year. So for the last how long? Five years now, I've tested this out in economic independence. And it's the most amazing thing we get to my wife and I get to travel around the world, uh, preach the gospel, uh, set up businesses, do stuff that we love doing. I mean, next week, in, in, a, in a week's time, we'll be in Jakarta with our brother Herman. Herman waved at us, so he, we know who we're talking about. And Bruce is going to join us, join us as well. Bruce has just gone off camera, but he, he'll wave. And, and Matthew, Matthew, do a quick wave. So, you know, the ability to do those sort of things and, and you know, just travel to places which is what I like to do. And each of you might have things that God's called you to do, but having the freedom, my family being looked after, uh, the things we get to do. Uh, I love waking up in the morning when I finish sleeping. How many of you get up to an alarm clock? Don't put your hands up. <laughs> How many of you hate, like doing it <laughs> or don't like doing it? Well, I love waking up when I finish sleeping, unless my mom wakes me up earlier with a phone call. Son, we got to do this today. Can you come in? <laughs> so, um, but it's just a joyous thing to have what we call in Hebrews chapter four, working in the rest of God. And the whole idea of economic independence, that's a key to financial freedom. If you can get to this point where you recognize that we don't need money to do everything. And then we start being able to steward what we have monetary wise, God can actually use you to pour in millions and millions of dollars. And so the key to financial freedom is first understanding economic independence. Does that make sense to people? Okay. And, and if you have any questions, please write them down and we're going to have some time. So I'm going to go to a presentation in a couple of minutes and then uh, we're going to have some time afterwards to do some really 
uh, bit of Q and A and and really dig deep into this understanding of how do I swap my income and start looking at kingdom principles uh, because it's really exciting to to begin to understand that God has a way of us accessing these sort of things. You don't have to wait to retire to start living a retired life. Okay, and, and as Matthew Ruben, can I just interject for a minute? Um, yep. Are you going to start the recording? I have started, yes. Oh, you have? Okay, good. Absolutely. Uh, but thanks for checking with me. Um, so I am recording this as well. We're hoping that, you know, once it's recorded, we can link this. So because there's stuff that we may cover that you may, it may, some of it might be right at the level you need. Some of it might be a lot of information and you can go back and, and review it as well. All right. So, um, hey, Bruce, <laughs> that was a late wave, but well done. <laughs> He'll be with us in Indonesia. Um, two months from now, we've been called to go to India. And I'm not doing this to brag. I'm just doing this to say to you, if I can do it, you can. Because here's the thing. Uh, when we understand the grace of God, then we can truly say it's only by grace and not by works that we get to do all this stuff. Because if I say it's to do with how many times I pray, how many times I fast, how many times I read my Bible, or how many times I do X, Y, Z, I start to qualify myself above or below what you do. And then all of a sudden, you've got to start qualifying yourself in order to do what I do. Okay? But instead of that, if we can start looking at the idea of, um, we can actually do this stuff. And I'm going to show you in scripture how God's blessing you not because of you. He's blessing you because of your faith in Jesus. Would you agree with that? Yeah. God's blessing you not because of you. He's blessing you because of your faith in Jesus, because he's, he's made that promise to bless the descendants of Abraham. And, and therefore, we are descendants, the Bible says, of Abraham through faith in Jesus. How exciting is that? So it's got nothing to do with you in terms of your works, what you do, but it's got everything to do with you in terms of your belief. And out of that belief comes your works, which is quite the opposite of what the world says. You've got to work hard to get your pay. Okay. So if we can look at the idea of uh, before financial freedom, economic independence, and today we're just going to look at this idea of um, how do we, how do we actually start to generate income that swaps our salary and then gets us out of debt, gets us into cash flow, gets us to this place where we can start giving, going beyond what we do, uh, doing what Colgate does. Has anyone heard about the story of Colgate? I've shared it with some of you guys and, and some of you in here. Somebody shaking your head, one a couple putting their hands up. All right. So wherever I go around the world, you guys all know about Colgate, the, the guy who, you know, did the, the, the toothpaste that brushes your teeth. You know, I was in India recently in a tribal village about two months ago. And guess what, what they have there? Because I, I left my toothpaste. I, did, I ran out and they came and bought some toothpaste for me, gave it to me. And it was Colgate. Right. And Colgate's everywhere. Now, the guy, Mr. Colgate, when he first started his business, about over 150 years ago, I think it is now, he decided that he would give away 10% of his income and uh, live off 90%. He then found and discovered that 90% of his income was way too much. So he decided to live off 20%, uh, live off 80% of his income and give away 20%. And he found that 80% of his income was way too much to live off. And kept, he kept on giving away until just before he went to be with the Lord, he actually was giving away 90% of his income, living on 10%, and that was too much for him and his family to live off. How many of you would like that sort of story? Yeah, uh, we're in the right room. I don't know about the others who haven't put their hands up. I'm wondering if you're in the right place. But yeah, if you, if you, don't, if you don't faith it, you're not going to make it, all right? If you, if, not fake it, I'm talking about faith it, F-A-I-T-H. You've got to faith it to, to make it. But he made a decision Right from the beginning, he had a, a decision in his mind that he said, I'm going to give away 90% and I want to live off on 10%. Okay. Thanks, Herman. Yes, fake it, not, not fake it. Okay. So he made that decision right from the beginning. And, and so it did take him the rest of his life to achieve it, but he still achieved it. Now, the good news is that I've got, I've got better news than this, that in Christ, we can achieve it straight away because it has nothing to do with us anymore. It, it, uh, for our job is to steward what God has God given us. But the blessings are not based upon what we do. It's what we believe. Okay. So I always say to people, it's not that someone's going to steal some of your lunch and, you know, cut a piece of your the pizza and there'll be none left or take a bit of the sandwich sandwich and you won't have your share. Imagine that God's resources are like a never ending ocean. And the only question I have to you is how big is your bucket? How big is your container? 
okay? If your container, whatever the size or and capacity of your container, that's how much you're going to fill up. And and so by the end of uh, the, over the next half an hour, I just want to go through some some a little bit of a chatter on um, some things that will change our mind, and then some strategies that we can put into place. Whether you've just started business, already in business, been doing it for 20, 30 years, how you, these strategies you can put into place no matter where you're at because we just want to get to that next stage, all right? But just before I do that, um, I just want to quickly open this up to everyone because we've got a few of us in here and so we can just have about a mi 30 seconds to a minute each. And if you could just uh, greet us and just tell us what's the one thing you want to get out of tonight? Just one thing. So just 30 seconds from each person. Well, let me start with maybe Andrew. You've got three guys there. Uh, do three of you want to just a minute, just your name, and then what you guys want to get out of tonight. Each one of you, just one thing. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of interested in um, going deeper in the whole understanding of, of God working in and through us. And, a lot of it is, I know things to a certain level, but I know that there's so much more. And um, I guess I'm here to uh, to glean and to learn from other people, particularly you, Ruben, but other people who are further on in the journey than me, because I realise that there's so much more than where I'm at. So I guess that's what I'd like to get out of tonight. Hi everyone, and my name's Sean. I'm a friend of Andrew's, and I've been invited along tonight. And I think um, I like the idea of activating our faith and seeing God do amazing things, um, and just seeing His hand at work, and and how that can be used, and um, not to bless myself, but to reach. And the broken-hearted in lots of different ways. Hi, hi, uh, hi, everyone. Yeah, uh, my name's uh, Erminio, um, friend of uh, Andrew's, and uh, some of you may know me from Shane Deegan's um, meetings as well. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah. Look, my my heart is really to uh, come along and to listen, as Andrew has said to glean from uh, the wisdom of others as well. Uh, there's definitely a lot of uh, value and benefit in uh, what each person is uh, destined to share with one another. And um, we all have some treasures to share with one another, I believe. Uh, and yeah, uh, I think if we can facilitate the destiny that God has predestined for each of us, uh, and we come into agreement with that uh, through whoever God's using uh, through this time, uh, I believe that would be a great achievement. Yeah. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, who wants to go next? Shall we move on to, so on my screen next to me, the next one, square I've got is Rubika and, and mom. <laughs> so Bruce behave. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Rubika. And uh, one of the things, um, because I've been on a one-on-one -on -one coaching with Ruben for the last one and a half years, and I've been going for the Thursday, um, once a month KBN meetings, and I've grown so much. I've seen my business uh, grow so much. I've learned so much, and I just want to learn all I can, all that God wants to teach me. And I want to be one of those uh, business women who can plow back into the community. Yeah, my name's Rohini. I'm Ruben's mom, by the way. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I work in an environment where it's actually business. Um, and what I want to do is to hone into what God has for us, and not only for ourselves, not for me alone or for my family only, but to repay or to pay, to pour out to those who cannot um do as well who cannot uh, see what god has for them thanks so mom. this is a good platform awesome 
So next to me is uh, J Jocelyn from Malaysia. Would you like to just tell us one thing that you want to get out of tonight? Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Jocelyn from uh, Kuching, Sarawak. And uh, Matthew is my BE guru. <laughs> um, one thing that I would like to get out uh, from this uh, session tonight would be great to do something like what you have shared earlier that you don't have to start doing uh, you have you don't have to wait until your age of retirement to do what you are doing currently so that's basically um, i mean it would be great to like go around different places and then um you know do what uh, you're doing currently and having that kind of um economic independence yeah Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, next on the squares I have here is Naveen. Yeah, my turn. My name is Naveen. Uh, I reside in Melbourne. And um, I think um, from tonight, I mean, I'd, I'd really like to sort of understand the biblical or kingdom principles on um, financial freedom or economic independence with the, with the heart to be able to have uh, enough to freely do what God has called um, me to do and us to do as in the Great Commission. Wonderful. Beautiful. Thank you. And uh, next to that, Daphne. Hi, my name is Daphne. Um, uh, so I live here in Melbourne. Um, what I really would love to do is to... Um, to really see um, entrepreneurship and business and economic independence from um, from a biblical perspective, because I, I do believe that economic um, independence will buy a, a lot of personal choice and freedom, and and with that, um, it's the ability to, you know, with that is is also a great responsibility, but but also the ability to be able to impart good things to other people. And, and to make you know choices that are that will bless other people um, yeah it, yeah so that's it wonderful thank you Daphne Matthew you're next I things I think uh, I know pretty much everyone the only two three persons four persons I've not met yet Andrew and his colleagues and uh, Navin in person so otherwise, uh, greetings in his precious name. Uh, as Ruben said, I'm the founder of uh, Kingdom Business Network. So this is what we do. Uh, I will talk a little bit more about KBN a bit later. Maybe that, then you'll understand where we're coming from. Uh, to me, I think as Ruben and Bruce, we know, you know, jo Jesus has finished the work on the cross. Right? Amen. Everything is done for us. So we just need to take, run it, and activate it. And, and that's what we need to do. So that's where everything comes with it. You know, it's a, it's a package. You got your economic freedom, independence, and you have, uh, you know, you, you strive in your business or in your personal life. Uh, so the key thing is what we do here is to activate those uh, uh, gems or, you know, pe that people are not aware of, especially the believers. And, and that's what you know, we are here to do. And uh, that's what Ruben is doing today. So any one thing you want to get out of tonight, Matthew? I'm always on the learning mode. So whatever comes new, I'm here to receive. Awesome. Wonderful. Um, uh, well, I thank God for his, all, our, all our trainers that are on here are always learning, including me. So much we can learn from one another. Um, just learned something yesterday from Rubika, which I'll share with you today, um, because it was a revelation, because the Lord had spoken to me about sharing that scripture. And yesterday she gave us a revelation that was amazing. So it's amazing what we can, what we can learn from one another. Uh, BJ, just uh, one thing you want to learn from tonight. Well, I didn't expect to... Uh to be here tonight. So I know that the Lord has something in store for me. And it was just a beautiful message that you opened up with, brother, about the Lord and the focus on Jesus and that he has done it all and our focus and our faith needs to be in him. So I'd like to lean into the Lord and press into the Lord and understand what you have to hear in that, on that. So thank you. Thanks, BJ. Welcome. Herman, hermeneutics from Indonesia. Can't okay. hear you. Hold on. Hello. Okay, no. okay, sorry, I was looking at my phone earlier. 
Um, hi guys, I used, uh, I used to live in uh, just around the corner from you guys in Blackburn South, but uh, five months ago God allowed us to uh, come home to Jakarta, Indonesia, and um, we were very grateful. We used to run a business in Australia, and um, in the last five months, uh, God also has allowed the business to run without us, which is, uh, which is uh, we're very grateful. Um, Look, uh, two years ago, I uh, met Re Ruben and, uh, and Matthew, and it's been an amazing journey. Um, with, uh, with what we've experienced um, uh, in full partnership with God, uh, there are a lot of doors open, especially five months here in, in, in Jakarta. Um, I think there are multiple doors are open now. We, we met new people. We, um, we found opportunities for us to, uh, to keep serving. So we'll probably what... What I really want to learn tonight is um, how do we discern, how do we pick um, the right things to do? Which one is for us and which one is not for us? Awesome. Thank you, Herman. Wonderful. See you next week there in person. Sir Bruce. Can you hear me? Absolutely. G'day, my name's Bruce. I'm uh, in Melbourne. Um, just literally just down the road from Ruben, you can probably hear me talking. Um, and Rebecca and Rahini, uh, hi, I could smell your dinner. No, um, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to and continuing looking forward to learning about um, moving out of the dependency on a salary uh, and getting to the point where stewarding um, other gifts and other resources and other ideas and visions and, and things that God has put in me will create um, the sort of income that frees me up from salary but enables me to continue to sow into the kingdom. So I see, uh, because of what I do in my life, I see everything as kingdom business or I see, I see it as family business, God's family business. It's all kingdom business, whether it's medical or work or recreation or family or or business and so the principles that um, that I can learn here I'll be able to apply to some of the areas of my life that I've um, probably not imagined their potential in the kingdom so I'm, that's every little bit every piece of the jigsaw that I learn in this process helps me to to both get a, a bigger vision but it also helps me to set a trajectory and some steps towards achieving that. So um, I, I love this idea of um, uh, financial independence, economic independence, and, and literally being a master of it rather than a slave to it. Yeah. Thanks, Bruce. So while I've got you on, just before I go to the next person, could you just share, I just asked you to share for a minute about when you met Matthew and I, what changed and what shifted from a, this couldn't be possible to the possibilities. Yeah. Um, so Matthew and Ruben uh, and me met sort of God incidentally, coincidentally, uh, not as a formal or purpose thing. It uh, was a pathway crossing. Uh, and in the process of doing that and just um, they helped me to realize that I, I could use uh, the hall at the church as more of an income revenue thing, which I'd imagined, but we didn't have the networks to be able to utilize that. So we started to see that happen. And then from that, after helping set up some of the uh, IT gear at the, at the event, I would listen in on what they were talking about while I was pretending I was running the, the laptop. And, uh, and I started to, um, I'm a fairly cautious person as a rule. Um, and so I'm listening to these guys banging on about uh, their kingdom business principles. And I'm thinking, uh, I'm not sure if this, you know, faith stuff and business, I'm not sure if they go together. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized, well, there's no separation at all. Uh, and then as I was listening, uh, one evening, um, uh, Ruben was speaking and he was asking us to think about what is it that, what is something that you want to develop? What's something you already have? and that you'd like to develop. Now, I was running the laptop, so to be perfectly honest, I thought I was just there to help, you know, just a you know, dog's body. Um, and I thought, well, maybe I should do the exercise, like, you know, what have I got to lose? And then I thought, well, I'm a minister. That's my, I'm a pastor. That's what I do. Um, I can't really, you know, develop that any more than the amount of hours I have in the day. And then, then God reminded me that I was uh, writing a book and in the process of um, Ruben saying, 
you know, what could you imagine this looking like in three or five years' time? And I thought, well, a book's a book. In three years' time, it's still a book. Uh, and then I thought, well, that's not, that's not what he's asking me to do, obviously. And then I started to think, now, this was a real breakthrough for me, to start imagining it bigger than maybe what I'd... So to start to see the, um, the top of the hill rather than the base camp, you know, rather than just getting to base camp and thinking that's the top of the hill. So I started to imagine a book and then I thought, well, the book is actually a really good topic. It'd be great to see that become some sort of study resource or some sort of teaching resource with a bit of a video thing with it. And actually, it'd be really good to have opportunities to go to places and, and to be able to teach people into the topic that, I, that I'm writing on. So the topic is worried sick or sick of worrying. Um, and, and it's a great topic and the, the, the revelations God's given me have been really helpful. Then... I was talking to Ruben and, uh, and Matthew about some of the mechanisms they were putting into place to, to sort of deliver the KBM material. And I, I, I brought in this um, principle that I've learned, um, the 4D process. And I was just mentioning a couple of those things. And I'll give you a clue. This is for, not just for me, but for everybody. A lot of the things that you think are normal to you, that you acquired or mastered and developed, can often look quite interesting uh, amazing, even extraordinary to other people. And just because you're used to it and you do it naturally and, it's, and it works for you doesn't mean everyone else has got it. And so I was mentioning these 4D steps and they're very, very simple, but most people don't naturally do them. And I was starting to help apply them to our own internal mechanism at KBN. And the guys were going, well, actually, we should teach people how to do this in business. And I'm sort of there sitting, oh, well, I don't know about that. And then all of a sudden I realized it's, it's like having one of those nuggets or treasures that some of the other guys have mentioned. It's about recognizing that God has put something in your hands and um, you should use it, not just use it, but imagine it and not just imagine it, but work towards an outcome, not for your own benefit uh, as much for, because it's designed to multiply and it's designed to be able to bless other people to live up to their potentials as well. Not because their potential makes them significant, their potential makes them a bigger blessing. So you're already significant in, in the eyes of God, but your capacity to be significant is in your own hands. Sig not significant in terms of uh, your uh, importance to God, but in terms of your influence for the kingdom. So I, I've just been really excited to be on uh, the journey so far uh, with the team, including uh, Rahini and Rebecca. Rahini gives me a lot of grief. She's, she, she, I think she thinks she's my mum too. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> um, that's just giving you a, a little uh, snapshot. I've got another thing that I started on, like, oh, could be 15 years ago, a thing called a hand cross. Um, I just used it as an illustration in, in one of the presentations the other week. And I've always wondered, how could I get that thing to multiply to a, to a bigger dimension? And I, I hit roadblocks in that. And I'm just starting to think, well, maybe there aren't as many roadblocks as I thought if God designs things to naturally multiply. Anyway, I don't know. Is that, does that help, Ruben? Is that sort of what you're hoping for? So I've got, yeah. there's at least three things there for me. There's yeah. my book and where it could multiply to. There's obviously the 4D process, which um, I'm just continuing to refine and develop as a, as a resource to serve other people. It has been an absolute breakthrough for me uh, in terms of my own um, team development, my own leadership, and even and my own personal awareness of where my... Um, unseen roadblocks are that have just sort of stopped me and as i've shared it with the others they've sort of gone oh this is great this is great and i've sort of gone oh uh, is it and then i realized i see things in them that i think are great and i've told them um and i had to just come to realize that when they said hey this is good that maybe they were seeing something that i that had been come normal to me but was really helpful awesome thanks bruce so just in context of what, what we're saying with, uh, with what Bruce was sharing was he, and here's a, a man who's a minister who ha didn't have a concept that, you know, you could have income from any other source except from the church source. So suddenly having this idea that, uh, yeah, some of you are smiling because you're going, yeah, that's me. That could be me. Anyone um, else here like that? Put your hand up. <laughs> I'm having some nods in here. So, so, and then some in, in less than, you know, three, four months, just having a change over saying this is possible. Yeah. And that's exciting because watch that space um, in the next one year, next two years, what, what could have been waiting for retirement for 65 years 
and having nothing at the end to now being able to take over the world, basically. That's, that's pretty yeah. much potential within this man and some of the stuff he's teaching. So he's on board with us and, and we yeah. love what we teach and we'll be in Jakarta uh, next week with him. Hey, uh, Jakarta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Craig, uh, welcome. Yes. Hey, Juan, Aaron, my, my um, name's Craig. I'm, yeah. uh, my business is at that cross point at the moment where um, it could go into a big expansion type thing. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to sort of get the foundations right and just sort of see uh, what God's got in, in store for that. So it's exciting. Wonderful. Good to have you on board, Craig. Where, where are you calling from? Which part of Aussie? Uh, Several East. Excellent. Valley. Wonderful. Wow. Good to have you on board. And we've got Vegas. Um, is that your name or is it where you come calling from? There, Vegas? Or is it Vegas? No? All right. He might, might, might not be, he or she might not be on. All right. Wonderful. Thanks, guys. So that's kind of just wanted to get an idea. So you know from each other as well, what's one thing we want to get from tonight. Here's the exciting thing. I'm going to share a presentation of what the Lord's just put on my heart. Uh, to share with you tonight. And I believe that pretty much everything that God has purposed, the questions you have will start to get answered and be just really interesting. Now, I do suggest if you've got a pen and paper or if you've got your phone, uh, don't take a lot of notes, but be able to take some little points that the Holy Spirit's going to show you, uh, speak to you about that will answer the stuff that you're going through. So this is not about getting everything from it. It's just imagine a big banquet. There's a whole big, huge piece of meat break it up into pieces and take whatever you need. All right. So I'm just going to share my screen and uh, get this presentation up. Can you all see, see the screen? Yep. Excellent. If anyone can't just let me know, but I look from the nods of people's heads that they can. So <clears throat> this is the first screen I want to just share with you. Oops. Let me just go back. Let's try that again. I need to move something out of the way. Here we go. And so here's a question I wanted to ask you guys, and you just answer this to yourselves, but where are you in business today? So there are four categories that we've uh, looked at uh, in regards to where we are in business, where one, each of you could be in regards to business. So you could be in the discovery state, which is a blue circle, ready to start a business. You could be in this startup state where you've actually launched a business and you're in the first 18 months of it. You could be in the break-even category, which is the orange uh, circle, which is you've been in business for two to five years, uh, or you could be in the uh, past five-year period uh, and you're looking at the idea of you either in profitability and now you're moving to sustainability or you're in one of that in sustainability, moving to scalability or succession. And um, for those who are anyone in the purple group, uh, there's this program we do called Build to Last, which is how do you get yourself to work where you run without, where the business runs without you, which Herman, for example, has done in Indonesia. And that's excellent to hear that. It's exciting to hear the news that he, the business runs without him. Um, now, you might be in the discovery state where you've got an idea that you want to get into business, but you actually haven't started up yet. Um, or you might be in the green or the orange. So I want you to take a minute just to think about which one I'm, am I in so that when I'm talking to you, you can kind of pitch at where, whatever we're talking about is at which point in your life, uh, a life cycle of being in business. The next thing I want you to look at on this screen is where are you in, pers in your personal and business finances? Okay, so the first, the, the blue square, the dark blue square is people who are in debt need to get out of debt. And I won't ask anyone to put their hands up because each of us have these places where we might be in one of this, in this category or the other, either in your business or personally. Are you in debt, need to get out of debt? A lot of people who do a startup usually in the first two to five years, uh, first 18 months, sorry, are trying to clear off their debts, usually of the capital that they've, they've spent. Um, are you into cash flow? instead. So you're, you're not in debt, but you now want to get into a cash flow situation or you're already in a cash flow situation. Okay. And where I want you both, where I want with either category that you're in is to move you to this third category, which starts no matter where you're at, which is what we call kingdom philanthropy, giving beyond ourselves. 
okay? And that's the exciting part. So I don't wait to receive money to give. I give and out of giving we receive. And that's the exciting place because we're already blessed uh, because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. And that's, that's the, the, the most exciting, amazing place we can be in. So just take a minute to just look at, am I in the get out of debt place? I need to get out of my debts. Am I in to get into cash flow area? And I want to also just encourage you. Some people might say, I'm not in debt, but they might have a house loan. And I just want to encourage you to even think from a kingdom principle that you don't need to have a loan over your head in order to own a house. Okay, God's done that with me. It's exciting when I started to change my mindset that I didn't need to own a house through a loan. And it was interesting because I just thought everyone got a loan to buy a property. Went to Africa and found that people don't know what loans are and some parts of India and just, you know, they just learn to deal with whatever they have with the cash they have it with. So I realized you don't have to have a loan to own your own property. Came back to Australia, looked through the scriptures. It says, you know, you shall be a lender, not a borrower. So I made a personal decision not to borrow ever again. And yet I'm, I live in a house that I didn't have to use money to, to borrow and have a loan because I started to believe the word of God above the circumstances. And I just want to encourage you to do that. By the way, I, just another testimony, I was in getting out of debt. I was in a debt of $60,000 with the ATO and I went through a really bad financial crisis. Now I'm a very good, I'm a person who's done business for, for decades. And so I am very responsible to keep money aside for my taxes, but a situation happened in my life that caused me to just, you know, when something happens out of the blue and I'm sure you can identify with this, something happens that you, uh, the rainy day stuff that you didn't know would take place. And so it wiped away the money I'd kept aside for the ATO and I had $60,000 debt. Anyway, after 12 months and I did this, resting in peace, knowing that God has blessed me no matter what. And, I, and I'm and i owing money that I can't pay right now, but God has got this. And I just went about doing what God had called me to do, so economic independence. In in 12 months' time, I got a letter from the ATO saying, uh, Dear Mr. Saravanathan, we'd like to let you know that we've canceled your debt in full. And that is unheard of from the Australian tax office. Okay, so just to let you know that you know, God is able to do amazing things when we start to believe his promises. If you ask me what I did, it wasn't about fasting or praying. It was that I believed the promises of Jesus. What if we can take you guys on a journey and each one of you here, and I really value your time being here, take you on a journey where in 10 years from now, you just get to create so much income in your business and business is one way of creating income. There's many ways of releasing the wealth of, of heaven into earth, but one way is through, is through business. And what if we take you in this journey with business and get you to create so much of money, more than what you require, like Colgate, you might only need 10% or 50% to live on, and you've got so much more to give away. And we come back to this place in 10 years' time, and we all have, even over the webinar, and we all have tens of millions of US dollars sitting there as surplus. And, and we decide to go down each of us to our local councils with some of the money we have in our groups that, we, that we've grown over the 10 years. And we ask the council for their social issues in our area and say, could we take over the social issues? Uh, and what if we produce a solution for them? Uh, we're using our money. It's, it's, it's Christians putting their, their, their foot where their mouth is and mouth where their foot is, you know? And, and is it possible to do? Absolutely. And I don't believe we have to wait 10 years, but I want to just look at the idea of the reason we want to start generating wealth in business is beyond ourselves. Um, and, and it's being able to say, how can we start to function in a, in a place where we can be the answer to society rather than blaming the politicians and anyone else? Proverbs says that when the righteous are in authority, the city is in joy. When the righteous are in authority, the city is in joy. So the joy of our city is based on when we, the righteous, who believe in Jesus, are in authority. So what if we can make a change and take over social issues? And then what if we tell the council that the money they would have charged the taxpayer, the rate payer, they would reduce in the next rates notice when they send it out to, in, in our country, it's, you know, to the suburbs, they send out a rates notice. Now that would really impact our cities. So right through this time, I want you to just think about some of the things I've talked about. And would you just write down, I'm just going to give you 30 seconds uh, to do this. Just write down one thing that we've just, I've just shared in the last few slides.
that's really impacted you? Would you just write that down, type it down? Because these are God things that God wants to do in your life and cause it something to, to, to flourish from today. I'm just going to give you a few, a few seconds to do that. Wonderful. So I talked earlier about um, the difference between financial freedom versus economic independence. And I, and I mentioned to you that the key to financial freedom is economic independence. And it's really important you understand that because when we go by the biblical understanding of, of how to create wealth upon the earth, uh, we actually start seeing changes happen really fast and really quickly. And we start seeing improvements happen, not just in our lives, but in the people around us and in the society around us and in the nations we, we touch and we go to, okay? So financial freedom basically means the money to be free, okay? And, and many churches are ministering this as well, as well as non-church bases, is teaching people how to be financially free. And we've got on this bandwagon. I'd like to suggest to you that in the last five years of me retiring at 36 years of age and, and just before that, understanding that actually money, I don't have to be, waiting for money to be free. So I learned something different, which is economic independence from the word of God. And I'm not better than you. It's simply that I chose to understand something and I want to share what I understood. So I talk about three things, learn a truth, live a truth, and then teach a truth. So I, was, I learned a truth and I started to live it and it was working and now I'm living it and I'm teaching it. Okay. But I can only teach it because I'm saying I've, I've lived this and it's such an amazing thing. So Economic independence is freedom regardless of money, okay? Financial freedom is about goal setting, and I want you to kind of get what I'm saying here. Financial freedom is about I want to set a goal in the future, and I want to achieve it, whereas economic independence is about living your purpose, okay? And you can start living it today, and that's the exciting thing. What has God told you to do today? Start doing it, even if it's in a small capacity. If God put on your heart to start giving, helping an orphanage and you have in your, in your desire to help uh, to set up an orphanage in every single nation or in every single suburb in your, in your, in your, uh, or every single city in your uh, nation, start with one, start giving out to one, start with whatever capacity you have and start to grow in capacity. Economic independence is about actually starting with the one thing you want to do right now and then just growing. Okay, so even this webinar, it's an interesting thing that um, Peter Kumar, one, one, of, the, one of the men who, who works with us with KBN, who's a, who has a prophetic uh, calling on his life, uh, the last time he was here, spoke and said, you're going to start speaking in webinars. And I've always wanted to take this to a webinar platform, but never knew how we'd exactly do it. And I know Matthew was doing some webinars, and, but it was just never, nothing was flowing to get this happening. I just thought, wait, and we just wait. Uh, and it's interesting, Andrew came up and said, hey, would you do a webinar? I said, I have no clue how to do it. He said, well, I'll set it all up. And can you start teaching? And I said, okay, we'll start. Now, my heart is to be able to do a webinar for thousands of people to be able to hear this truth. So what am I doing? I'm living in purpose right now by doing it for one, doing it for 12, doing 15. So last week, just Andrew and I got on, sorry, Monday, Andrew and I just got on and we just did a webinar. One person. Today, we got about 15 of you. Imagine what can be further down the track. Are you, are you getting where I'm going? So uh, financial freedom is about goal setting. I'll do it when I have the money. Okay. But economic independence is I do it now and I start growing in capacity, which is really exciting. Here's some uh, reasons and I'm only going to go through one tonight, but seven reasons why it's your right and responsibility as a believer to create wealth and live debt free starting today. So as we said, economic independence is about what, to, what am I doing right now? I can start doing it right now. I can live the purposes God has called me to live regardless of money. And so here's some seven steps, and I'll send it to you later if you'd like a copy of this. But I'm just going to look at the first step, and they're all from the scriptures. And this is what, some of the things that have really set me free and helped me in, in being able to live an economically independent lifestyle where we just do the things God has called us to do. And any business we start has to run without us. And it has to generate enough resources to release us money-wise and time-wise to do the things that God has called my family to do. So exciting. It's wonderful. Okay. 
this first thing here, it says, it is my God-given right and responsibility to generate wealth. That's number one. It's my God-given right and responsibility to generate wealth. And I want you just to think about that for a minute. What does that actually mean? It comes from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. So it's my God-given right and responsibility to generate wealth. Now, if you believe that, because that's what the word says, then you've got to actually realize that you've got a, a right and a responsibility. I call it a royal right, because we are sons of God. That includes the women. We are the bride of Christ, includes the men. When we came into this born again experience, we're not just servants to God and to righteousness, but the Bible says he took us from slaves of sin to servants of righteousness, slaves of righteousness, sorry. And then he made us sons of God. And he gave us with the rights, he gave us a responsibility as well. And it is a responsibility for you to learn to generate wealth. And it is God who gives you the power to do that. So I want to look at this first part, and that's all we're going to look at tonight in these seven steps and this one part. And you shall remember the Lord your God. So if you can look at this first part of the scripture in Deuteronomy 8.18, 8, you shall remember the Lord your God. Because the second part says it's he that gives you the power to get wealth. Because he wants to establish a covenant, which is to reconcile man to God. But this first part is really important. What does it mean to remember the Lord our God? Because if I remember him, it is then my ability to create and generate wealth on this earth. And so I want to share with you this, this scripture that you've heard many, many times, Matthew 6.33. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So all these things, that includes wealth. Okay? And in this chapter, he actually talks about don't worry about tomorrow. Don't look at what you're going to wear. What you, it's all talking about how finances can really put us under this pressure, the desire for finance, the feeling that if we don't have, we can't look after our families. We can't do the things God has called us to do. We can't have the things that we, we want to have. And yet Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything's going to be added to you. And let's just look at this from a financial side of things. If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then wealth is added to you. And so the key is, it is God, remember the Lord your God, because we know it is he that gives us the power to create wealth. So it's not begging God today, guys. At the end of this session, I don't want you to think, I've got to beg God to give me an idea for business. I've got to beg God to help my business go further. I've got to beg God, you know, you know when we start thinking of which business should I choose? Lord, I need to make a decision today. Tell me we've got the wrong end of the stick because he's going to bless you whatever you choose because you have the mind of Christ. And imagine if you come from that point of view, and I know some of you, especially the religious people here might be chucking chickens out of there anyway, um, which I did when I first began to understand this concept is, you know, but I don't know what the will of God is, but the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. And that's so exciting. We have the mind of Christ. So seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now, Rubika had an interesting revelation on this yesterday, and I, and I just want to ask if she would just quickly share that revelation of what, she, what that meant. Uh, Rubika, are you there? Yeah. Um, I just, I, I believe the Lord just put this into uh, my heart yesterday, that because he's put this scripture on my heart for the last nine years, over and over he'd bring it back to me. But last night, I realized that in the Old Testament, we were always asked to seek God, to seek him and we will find him. But in the New Testament, in Matthew 6, it says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So it's now that we are to seek the kingdom of God rather than God himself, because we already know God. We are already with the Lord. Thank you. How amazing is that? After the cross, God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So now he's not saying, seek me because I'm so far away. But he's saying to us as believers, would you seek the kingdom? And his righteousness, whose righteousness? The righteousness of Jesus. And everything's added to us. So Jesus said some things while he was on this earth. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. Okay? When he was standing in front of Pontius Pilate, he said, 
the kingdom I come from is not from this world. So I want you to understand something really important. When we're creating wealth on this earth through business, we're going to be using the knowledge, the understanding, the wisdom that is not from this earth. The materials we may use are from this earth, but the kingdom principles that we will uh, acquire come from another place. And it was not created by this earth. That's how exciting it is. In fact, the, the place, the kingdom that Jesus comes from is what created this earth. And that's exciting. So the first thing I want you to understand is that knowledge, the, the knowledge you're going to use in your business, whether you start up, whether you've been running it for a while, whether you're ready for it to, 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 to run without you, um, whether you're already doing that and you want to start some other businesses, is that the kingdom that we're talking about, that we're seeking, does not, is not contained by this world and did not originate from this world. It comes and it's made from a different DNA. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then he said, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said, the kingdom of God has come upon you. So this thing that Jesus, this place that Jesus talked about, this culture, uh, these principles, these strategies that he talked about that do not come from this world. He said, it's, it's at hand. It's within you. It's upon you. How exciting. Okay. So it's my God-given right and responsibility to generate wealth. Would you agree with that today? Because before you want to create some strategies, and I'm going to show you some strategies in a minute, but before we can do that, you've got to agree with, you, with God that he does want you to be wealthy. And there's a reason for that. It's to fulfill his covenant that he swore to your fathers. What covenant was that? It's what he swore to Abraham, that in blessing you shall be blessed. Through your seed, all nations shall be blessed. And he was talking about Jesus. So, what did Jesus come to do? He came to reconcile man to God. And so when we can use our wealth to reconcile man to God in whatever we do, then we are fulfilling the covenant that God swore to our fathers. Praise God. It's exciting. So I want you to think for a minute and write down just one thing that you just got from what we just shared right now. One thing, two things that you can just take from here and say, I've got to change my mind on this. What's the new agreement I need to have? Have I uh, stopped God from releasing wealth into my life? Because God isn't stopping you. you let me put it this way. God isn't stopped by your actions of whether you, whether you do the right thing or wrong thing or anything like that. He's stopped by whether you limit him by your beliefs. And if you believe that he has released everything, through Jesus and you have faith in Jesus, then it's you just turning that tap on because the water is already flowing. And so it's your mind making a decision because in the past, some people have had a poverty mindset. How am I really to be blessed? God doesn't bless everybody. And I've got to do X, Y, Z to be blessed. And instead of that, just saying it is my royal right and responsibility, making an agreement, a new agreement. It's my royal right and responsibility. To, to create wealth. <clears throat> and, and if that, if what will help you further is this, if I um, came and gave you a gift, a really expensive gift, say it was, uh, you know, the, the latest iPhone um, and, and it was the latest iPhone seven plus and cost me quite a bit of money to get it for you. And I gave it to you as a gift and, and you put it in the drawer, you thanked me profusely for it, but you put it in a drawer and you never used it. And every time I called you, you would answer on another phone and not the iPhone 7 Plus that I gave you. You'd answer on your old, you know, dirty, broken phone. And I'd suggest, and I'd ask you, why, why aren't you using the phone I gave you? And said, no, 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 I've kept it safe. It's such a beautiful gift. Thank you so much for it. And I've kept it safe. How do you think I would feel? You feel good about yourself that you're keeping it safe because you don't want it to become like the uh, broken phone that you've got in your hand. While I, the giver of the gift, is so saddened that I gave it to you to take you up to another place and you're not willing to use it. Now, God's called us to be sons and we can't change God's plan on that, but we can act as servants and, and slaves and refuse to, to be a son and therefore he can't give us the responsibility of being a son. I like what Matthew said once. The first time I heard it, I didn't, I didn't quite get it. And then after a while I did. He said, God loves everyone, but he doesn't trust everyone. Can he trust you with what he wants to give you? Because it's in your hands to create that wealth. 
So I want you to just think about that for a couple of minutes. Wonderful, getting some amens here. I'm just looking at some of the messages that have been put on here. Okay, so I've got a couple more things to share with you and then we'll open it up for questions. So here's some really good strategies that I want you to think about. It's a five-step process that I've used over and over again. I've set up over six businesses in, in my time from with no capital and I've set up much more than that with capital. Um, but I always tend to use this five-step process. Now, just to give you an idea, one of my businesses that I set up without capital, and this is not to brag, but this is to explain how systems work when we begin to let God use us to create wealth. Uh, one of my businesses was, uh, is, was a student accommodation business where I got this idea of being able to sublease rooms, and I had about 15-plus properties at any one time. It would take me about 12 to 18 hours a week to manage um, and I would get student accommodation going from the uni near the university, and I would be able to generate between thirty to forty thousand Aussie dollars, which is a, close to you know twenty five to thirty five thousand u s dollars at the time uh, per month. Now is that good or good okay um, that was awesome. Um, I had another business an i t business that i would uh, I would go to a client and rather than being the programmer, I would pass on the work that I was doing to a programmer and I would be the subcontractor in a sense and we'd get 50% of the cost and I was doing work for some of the big firms like Melbourne and Monash University and using this process again starting from nothing and uh, being able to generate hundreds of thousands of dollars um, from a I mean I've got a program that was written 10 years ago that's still generating income passive income today of tens of thousands of dollars every every year and it, it's amazing when you put these steps together. So I'm giving you time just to have a look at these steps. And there's a 13 page report that I can send to anyone if any of you are interested and I'll give you some details. Uh, I'll put it up here on the screen. If you wanna Facebook me or WhatsApp me or email me, I'm happy to send you this report. But this is five steps that whether you're starting a business from scratch, whether you have capital or no capital, because these two businesses I just described you described to you, I started with no capital. Started one recently. Uh, where I did put capital in and within three months I had a return on my investment. This process will help you with that. Okay. And uh, so step one is finding a product or service. They, they seem simple and trivial. I think they're so easy, but step two and five, many businesses miss out on it. And even if you've got a business that's running, that's been running for 10 years plus, you still need to review this and say, have you got steps two and five in place? Steps two is re step two is research your potential clients and find your target market. There's two types of research, primary and secondary research, and you need to be continuously having research done to improve your, your products or look at new products and services. Add value, and that's what distinguish, distinguishes you from others, which is step three. And step four, once you've done step three, step four is really easy. You don't have to convince people to buy when you've added value that meets their needs because of the research you did. And you get to step five, very important step. A lot of people um, in business sell to their customers and you never, they never talk to their customers again. Uh, having a great customer experience, giving them an experience, so having good customer service will make them either come back again or ra rave on you and you be they become your walking billboards of advertising. So here's a five-step process. And it's part of a 13 page report that I've written on, on taking your business from okay to wow. Okay. This is exciting to me because I was just putting these principles together and I'm gonna share this with you and then we finish, I open up for some questions. Um, some strategies, strategies and principles from Isaac. Uh, I love Genesis chapter 26. And if you have your Bible with you, uh, I mean, I'll read it out to you. Genesis 26. Um, verse 12. I love what it says there, and I just want to encourage you with this and to start believing that God has promised the same thing for you. Then Isaac sowed in that land, sorry, uh, verse 13. The man began to prosper and continued, continued prospering until he became very prosperous. 
And uh, I just want you to, I don't know if you can, can you guys see me still? Let me stop the share for a minute because I want you to see me. I want you to have a look at, this is really important. In our lives, we tend to be with finance and with everything in our lives, we tend to be up and down. So we get things, things go well, and then suddenly they go down again. And we're like this oscillations of up and downs in our life in, in whether it's finance, whether it's health, whatever these different areas. Does that make sense? And, and so things go up, we give a testimony, things go down, we go to God and pray panic prayers. Okay. The roller coaster. Yeah. Thanks, Herman. Absolutely. Now, when you understand economic independence and when you understand the kingdom of God, what happens is you start here and you stay constant and you have little bouts of downtime, but you bounce back up. Because you've understood and you're not, going to, you're not going to go back down this way. When you change your mindset, and what I'm going to share with you next is if you can start to agree with this and really meditate on this, and we're going to open this opportunity and invite you to this opportunity again in about three weeks' time because there's two parts to this, what I'm teaching, and we can't share everything today. Others I'll go over time, and we're meant to finish at half past nine. So we've got another 25 minutes. Okay, and I do want to open up for some Q&A as well. So... How many of you like roller coasters <laughs> in your life? Maybe not in real life, but you know, a lot of people shaking their head. We don't. <laughs> okay, so health is the same thing. We, in health, everything's great. Suddenly we're down, uh, and then we've got to keep praying, praying, praying. We get, get up again, and then we're down and up, and it's never constant. Relationships. Uh, but we're just going to focus on finance right now. And I want to just, for you to think for a minute, how would life look if you were on a constant high if you like because the kingdom of god is like a constant drug <laughs> a good drug it's a constant high because you ca it comes from another world and you belong to that other world and so you start to be a ambassador to this world not a visitor to this world you get the difference because if i'm a visitor to another country when i go to indonesia next week i'm a visitor there i have to live still by the rules of indonesia and i have to adhere to those rules even though i'm an aussie citizen okay but if I go there as an ambassador, if the Australian government sends me as an ambassador to Indonesia, I pretty much can do whatever I like based on my Aussie rules and Indonesia government can't do anything about it because I've got diplomatic immunity. Now, we're all citizens of heaven. The moment we're born again, we're given a new passport, a citizenship of heaven. But Paul talks about in Corinthians this, uh, this idea of an invitation to, would you be ambassadors for me? And that changes the whole ballgame because I'm not a citizen of heaven who's visiting the earth. I'm a citizen, I'm an ambassador of heaven who comes here, but I'm governed by the rules of heaven. So I'm on a constant high. And if, I, if there's a problem, I bounce back up. I'm not oscillating anymore. I'm not going up and down based on my, my levels of how much I fasted today or how many books of the Bible I read or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. Those things are great, but I don't fast to get a breakthrough. I fast because I'm in breakthrough. Okay. I don't give in order for God to bless. I give because God's blessed. I don't go to church to get blessed. I go to church on a Sunday for service because I am blessed. Amen. Okay. And, and so we, we need to be on this. So I'm going to just share with you for the next five minutes is principles where if you start to agree with this and it takes some time to do that sometimes, sometimes it takes some time, but it's better than not agreeing with it is we're on this place and then, you know, if you have a little, if you fall, you're going to get up again. Fall, you're going to get up again, but it's really fast and you're not doing this. How many of you would like to hear this, what I'm going to say? Yeah, it's from the word. So all I'm leaving with you is the word. So you don't need to come back to me. If you never come back to me, it's all right, but you should come back in three weeks time because there's a part two, but all I'm leaving with you is the word, spirit of God, because it's going to cause a change in our lives. Amen. Okay, so let me just put this share back on. Hey, it's coming. I've just got to find the share button. <laughs> Here it is. Tried to hide from me. And let me just finish with these last four slides. So in Genesis 26, write it down. Uh, and read the story of Genesis 26 when you can. Genesis 26 verse 1, uh, verse 3 says, uh, God speaks to Isaac and says, Dwell in the land and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. 
Guys, I want you to understand something. Your prosperity, this is a strategy and a principle for your business. And it's also for your personal life. Your prosperity is dependent on God's oath to Abraham fulfilled in Jesus. It's, so you need to start and continue believing in that. Galatians 3, 7 says, just like Isaac promised, was prom his prosperity was based on not what he did, but what Ab the promise that God had made to Abraham. Gen Galatians 3, 7 says that we are by faith the children of Abraham. So you have the same promise, the same, uh, the same principle that you will start to begin to be prosperous, continue to be prosperous, and be very prosperous indeed. How exciting is that? It's not a roller coaster anymore. You start, you continue, and you always are from today onwards. And I can attest to that in the five years. All I've done is seeing a greater capacity growing, and there's not this up and down oscillation in finances, in the issues with, with health or with relationships or anything like that, because you start to be prosperous, you continue to be prosperous, and you're always prosperous. How amazing, okay? In, Galatians, in Genesis 26.3, God says to Isaac, I'm blessing you because of the promise I made to your father, Abraham. That's why he was blessed. Strategy and principle number two. Genesis 26 verse one, it says, now there was a famine in the land. Then he goes on to say, and I'm gonna show you that in a minute, it says, Isaac planted and he reaped a hundredfold in the first year. How amazing. You can reap even in a drought. Don't doubt it. So don't look at the economic situation around you. Remember I said the key to financial freedom is what? Economic independence. Being independent of what the economy is doing. You don't care about the economy anymore because you're not a citizen of this earth. You're not even a visitor to this earth. You're an ambassador to this earth, but you come from another place that is outside of this earth. And therefore your principles and strategies of reaping, even in a drought, comes from another world. How amazing. You can reap even in a drought. Don't doubt it. Number three, and there's just four strategies I'm going to share with you and then we finish. Open up for Q&A. Sow to reap. So to reap, Galatians 26, verse 12. It says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. If you don't sow, you're not going to reap. So don't look at what you don't have. Use and steward what is in your hand now. That's faith in action. Matthew 24 talks about the, the servants that were given talents and the one who buried it and the other two that actually went and multiplied it. So what's in your hand? God said to Moses, what's in your hand at the burning bush? He said, a staff. He said, Chuck, throw it on the ground. He said, I'll use what you have. And, and God used, get, allowed Moses, use the staff in Moses' hand to rescue a whole nation. So to reap. That's meant to be number four. Expect to also reap where you have not sown. Okay, in John 4, 38, it says, you shall, where I send you, you shall reap that which you have not labored for. If you look at Isaac, he just grew so much. He began to reap where he had not even sown. He began to amass wealth. He began to be the, the most, uh, the richest man in that time. And God wants to do the same for you and for me. Why? To fulfill the promise and the vow and the covenant that he made with Abraham, which was in your in blessing, I will bless you. And through your seed, all the nations shall be blessed. That is through Jesus and to reconcile man to God. Just want to open it up for, for q and I'm going to stop the share. Okay. So any questions that anyone has? And what I'd ask you to do is just unmute and uh, just ask the question and then uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you an answer. Or you can type it up if you feel if you prefer to do that. So we've got a chat screen at the bottom. Uh, Ruben, you're, you're saying something about uh, primary and secondary research. Could you explain more on that? Yep, yeah, sure, I can. 
Um, so basically there's two types of research that you do if you want to find out the needs, the, the, I call it, call it the desires, the fears, the wants, the needs of the people that you want to market to. Um, and so primary uh, research, secondary research is the easier one. Primary research is the better option. Uh, so secondary research is basically if you hear a news item on the internet or um, you read something uh, about someone who's saying that they really have a problem that they need to solve and and you now can say oh if en enough people are having this problem say there's a lot of people in the a lot of men in the, between the age of 40 to 45 in a certain pl place in your area that are finding it hard to sleep at night they have sleep apnea and and you go well i've got a solution for that now you've got already already market for it. That's secondary research because you've heard about it. And then I would do primary research where I'd actually go to that niche group of people and actually ask them the question, are you sleeping well at night? And if I had a solution for you to be able to sleep well at night, would you pay, how much would you pay for it? And, and so when you do that research and find out that a high percentage of your niche group is saying yes, and high percentage means, you know, 30% is enough, you've got a ready-made business. And all you've got to do is now find the solution because you've already got your customer what we call reverse engineering. Does that help? Excellent. Good question. Any other questions? Any other questions? Feel free. Let's do it faster with, because we are on a, a clock. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Reverend. Yeah. Um, my question is, um, the uh, last scripture that you shared there about um, the uh, the promise that God made to Abraham is now fulfilled through Jesus. Yep. Um, so now with that, um, we, we just come into agreement with the promise that God has made through Abraham or do we come into agreement with what Jesus teaches about the kingdom? Either one works well because you've got to understand that before Moses, Abraham was before Moses, before the law was the kingdom in operation. Yes. And then everyone wanted the law. So they went to God and said, give us something like everyone else. And so the law came in and enslaved us up to the point of Jesus. And then Jesus brought, re, 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 caused us to rediscover what was already on the earth at the beginning when God said, let us make man and give them dominion over the earth that domain is kingdom. So either way, it's, it's understanding that the Old Testament is a type and shadow, but it's also an, an understanding of what the new covenant is. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And when we sure. agree with it, we begin to live it. And the way we live the truth, so it's learning the truth, but living it. And so living the truth is being able to understand, guys, that you already have it in your spirit. Your spirit already knows it. You're getting an understanding and a revelation here but you've now got to settle it in your heart. That means every time a problem comes, you can choose to reflect the spirit or you can reflect the circumstances. You've got to make that choice uh, between the two. Okay. But that's an excellent question. Hope that helps. So I'll give you an, uh, an example. When I started to believe that John 4.38, uh, wherever I send you, you shall, you shall reap that which you have not labored for. It's amazing that we're seeing not just souls getting saved, but we're seeing businesses turning up, opportunities turning up. I'll ask Rubika again just to share, because she started to learn this principle now. now she's always wanted a cafe for a cake business. And um, she said, you know, the first thing, if I do a cake business, have a cafe, I've got to pay money for the, for the actual place, and, and it's going to be need for capital, and I'm going to manage it. I'm going to have time, and she's got four beautiful children that she's still you know, taking care of. They're grooming, um, and they're, they're, they're still young in, through high school and primary school. Um, Rubika, what happened just about a month ago? Uh, yeah. As, as Ruben said, I've always wanted to have a cafe and a place where people would come in just sit around and um, be, be almost at home, away from home. And uh, about a month ago, um, just up, from, up the road from us, uh, there was a cafe taken over by another uh, couple. And I started to introduce a few of the cakes there, uh, went and talked to them. They were happy to take some of the cakes. 
And then um, we sat down and had a chat about what he wanted, what the owner wanted to see in that cafe. And then he said to me, look, I don't have time to look at the dessert and cake side of things in this cafe. Can you just pretend this is your cafe? <laughs> Take over, manage it, and just do whatever needs to be done to pick up on this dessert side. And that's just the Lord. I can, that's all I can say because I don't have to work there. I don't have to put any money. I don't have to sow anything there. I just have to come up with the ideas, the plans, and just manage it. I go to him, I give him a plan. I say, look, you know, what about this? What do you think about this? And then he said to me, look, just go ahead and do whatever you think needs to be done. Awesome. So Amen. when you start to believe the truth, it doesn't make you free, it sets you free. Let me say that again, it doesn't set you free, it makes you free. Because the truth already set us free 2,000 years ago on the cross. And just imagine yourself in a jail cell and the jail door is open. It's unlocked. And you can get out whenever you want because the judge already signed off that someone's already taken the, the, the penalty for you. And you're just sitting there. So you were set free 2,000 years ago. And that's what the Bible says. The truth, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And as you begin to agree with the truth beyond the facts, and we talk about there's always a difference between facts and truth. You start seeing things where you start applying these principles that are amazing. Because I always told, was taught that it's only sowing and reaping. And sowing and reaping works really well. That's really important. But here's another amazing thing. The ability for you to be able to listen to God, do whatever he says. And as you do what he says, you start to reap. How amazing is that? Okay, Herman. okay I have a question then. Um, it's actually on the last slide. Um, can we consider what Rubika just experienced as, what was it? It's to also read what we have not sown. Absolutely. Absolutely. But here's the key to that. If you want to start reaping where you haven't sown, it says, where I send you, you shall reap that which you haven't sown. That which you haven't labored for. So the key to that is, so here's the thing, guys. If you sow, you're going to reap. Mm. Sow in the flesh, you sow to destruction. Sow in the spirit, sow to life. Okay? Mm. If you, so whatever you sow, there's going to be a reaping. But where God sends you, when you start to go where God sends you, and it's not hard to hear God's voice, by the way. It's easier than you realize. So wherever, wherever I send you, you shall now reap that which you have not labored for. Make sense? Hey, boy, Alfred, I'm just going to meet you here because your uh, your music sound is coming into the okay. And he just left the scene. Here we go. Hey, Alfred, just muting you. Wonderful. Okay. A uh, couple more questions. So really good questions. There's no such thing as a silly question. It's really important. Uh, whatever question you have. Any other questions? Any other, you know, something that I said that is not making sense that you'd like to share? Yes, Bruce. Um, we've got one from the Andrew feed as well over there. Um, just one of the things I I wrote down was um, when we when you were talking about seek first the kingdom, thing I wrote down was um, start at the start with him, from him because it's his design. And it's just a really good reminder in terms of um, kingdom business for me is not trying to think about making money, but thinking about being in a relationship with my heavenly father who has given me a good thing to, um, to bless me and bless others. But it starts with my heavenly father. It yeah. starts with that relationship. And, it, and I've, got to, I've got to admit, in terms of trying to process this whole um, seeing uh, economic independence and and um, wrestling with the the focus on uh, the financials, uh, it's easy to get caught up with the the product and the outcome above and beyond. This is actually coming out of a kingdom relationship, and 
I've got to hold that perspective each step. And so it was more of an observation as you were talking. I'm thinking, yeah, it's easy to just flip into that mindset. Well, if I did this, I could make this and that would multiply this and I'd have, which is really the added unto's. So seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. So it was just, it's just an observation, mate. So guys, could you just make sure that all of you have muted if you if you have, thank you. But those who haven't, we've got some background noise coming in, and because we're recording, that might not help with the questions and answers. Excellent, Bruce. I'm just going to stop you guys for a minute because we've got five more minutes before we're meant to finish. Now I'm happy to stay a little bit longer, and I'm just looking at my co-host Andrew whether he's happy to do the same. Um, but we just want to kind of look at telling you what. Yeah, <laughs> I got the thumbs up. Um, we want to get just to let you know what we're going to do. An opportunity for you to come to come back in three weeks time and do this again because as we do this we start to foster something and share with something that will actually cause results okay so i'm just going to let you know about that and then we'll continue the questions but at 9 30 whoever needs to leave uh, is more than happy to leave uh, more than happy for you to leave um before i do that let me just share the screen again So the next webinar, if you can take a picture of that or put in your diary, um, part two of this webinar. And if you could just type in a yay or nay, because I can't see you right now. I've had to close off my pictures, but a yes or no if anyone's interested in coming to this. Um, same time, same type of day on a Thursday, three weeks from now, 7th of September, we're going to have a part two of this webinar. So, hopefully, Alfred will get the message that <laughs> he keeps unmuting, and we're going to mute him. But all good. Okay. So, um, who who would be interested? Just a show of hands. I can see you guys all now. Would anyone be interested in next week? Okay. Excellent. And that's all we need. You know. All we need is a handful of people that are ready to do something and, and God can use that to incredibly duplicate. All right. So just before 9.30, I just wanted to give uh, Matthew an opportunity for a couple of minutes to just let us know about what KB and there's Kingdom Business Network, which I'm part of, Bruce is part of, a few of you are part of there. And, and just to let you know how we, if you're in the area and there are some different areas where we meet, what it's about. Um, and then... We'll, we'll finish off anyone who needs to leave and, and otherwise the rest of us can stay on and do a bit of more Q&A. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks, Ruben. Awesome uh, presentation and uh, as usual. And uh, I hope everybody had a good takeaway from that. Right. So now basically uh, what we're going to talk about KBN is uh, for those who already know what KBN is, I think we are pretty familiar. For those who don't know, especially Andrew and his team, and uh, Naveen and, uh, you know, if there's anybody else here who's, who's not familiar, uh, KBN was formed out of necessity. It's essentially, I've been training Christian entrepreneurs on biblical entrepreneurship training. And over, my, over the period of training, I've noticed that about 70% of the Christian entrepreneurs, so-called Christian entrepreneurs, they're still walking in a very circular way. And a lot of them are still walking in the poverty mentality. That means they're still looking at the way the worldly system works and that's how they operate. The only thing that the, the spiritual life is only on a Sunday when they go to church and Monday to Friday, it becomes a circular world. So this is where we decided to form KBN so that we can tell, teach them and equip them that, look, you need to walk uh, in the kingdom way, what God is talking about. That means as a kingdom entrepreneur, you are operating seven days a week under the kingdom of, in the kingdom of heaven. And all everything is done for you and you just need to, uh, take and run with it. That means as we talked about, seek first the kingdom of righteousness. So basically, once you understand the principles from the Bible, you will achieve multiplication because most business people struggle. They're still struggling you know, five years into the business. They're still not making money. Uh, you know, they're not multiplying. So the key thing is in kingdom business, you do is multiplication. It's not addition. That means you've got to double your business or triple your business over time. So this is where we got together and we said, how are we going to teach Christian entrepreneurs that, you know, the keys from the Bible so that they can be achieve multiplication in the business. They can also understand discipleship because, you know, we talk about Deuteronomy 8.18 and, and if you go to KPN website, we talk about faith and business working together. 
That means you're also an ambassador for God in the marketplace. So how do you impact the people who are around you, your customers, your employees, uh, your suppliers around you, uh, so that they know you're a kingdom person and that you're man- that is your ministry, that is your calling. Right, so these are some of the things we, that we, we we put together, and that's why KBN was formed. And today we have KBN in Melbourne, we got it in Sydney, Bendigo. Uh, we have on Jakarta with uh, Herman started that. Uh, we got one in Kuching, in uh, and also now we're starting one in Kuala Lumpur. So we are slowly expanding out of Australia into other nations. And what we do at KBN chapter meetings is like the one we recently had in Mitcham, uh, you know, in Melbourne, is where we get together for about ninety minutes. We bring whoever comes, we do a networking, then maybe introduce each other, uh, what uh, your business and what you do, so that we can encourage business, doing business with each other in the kingdom business. Then we go into a time of teaching, uh, 20 minutes teaching, and we go into time of discussion, what we, just like what Ruben just taught just now, we, we, you know, we make it very focused, uh, you know, just enough points that you can take away, and then we split you into groups, have a discussion, and then after that, we go into a time of prayer. So that's what we do at KBN uh, meetings. But of course, you know, through seminars and webinars, we have a lot of uh, devotionals that's going out. We keep on, you know, teaching you how to multiply in your business, how to grow in your business. At the same time, uh, you know, teaching you to be effective disciples in your, in your workplace as well. So that's the core reason. But the key, the other bigger mandate behind that, if once we take KBN across nations, you know, we as entrepreneurs, we don't have to depend on circular customers or clients or business. We can do business with each other, cross-border. We can grow, we can multiply. And from the finances we raise, we will be able to impact community, cities, and nations. I mean, we're going to go into projects like we're partnering with that Project 61, which Ruben and myself be a part of, where we actually identify projects where we can, uh, you know, help give them some loan or some advice and how they can grow their business, especially in developing countries, for example, in Africa, India, and so on. So it's, it's, that's what we do in KBN. So, I, I'm, you know, what I say, it might be, you know, I hope it's not confusing. Uh, you know, there's so much I can talk, sometimes I can carry it away, right? Yeah. So, it's me, you know, yeah. I have a huge heart uh, and uh, for God and for His kingdom, and uh, that's where we need to be. We have the authority. God has given us the authority. We need to take possession. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's my Absolutely. presentation. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Matthew. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm so excited to work with Matthew because of that huge heart. We, we actually were sitting together with doing this irrigation project for in Africa with this chap who uh, we can you know, get about sixteen to $18,000 and we're able to cause him to become financially... Uh, what well, we call it God dependent and self-sufficient in two to five years time. So rather than supporting the orphanage that he has of 27 kids, 29 kids, um, including four of his own or, 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 or organic kids, <laughs> four of his own, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> the mind's thinking funny things. Um, uh, <laughs> in two to five years time, not only is he going to be self-sufficient in this whole process, and we as business people are helping him set up his business to do that. But imagine what he's going to impact those 27, 29 kids with. When they grow up, what are they going to do? They're not going to start asking for handouts. They're not going to look at business enterprise to do the same thing. And look at the generation that will pass down. At the same time, he'll start helping people around him. And we can start helping other people instead of just giving money to one organization for the rest of our days. So that's some of the back-end stuff that's really exciting as well. Okay. Um, now, I, there was a question from Andrew's group that I wanted to uh, just open up to you. Hi, it's uh, Sean here again. And yes, Sean. I understand the difference uh, in the mindset moving away from financial freedom um, to the, the other mindset in the presentation. Um, but my question is, I'm still at the discovery phase of identifying a business idea and and I'm currently in debt with a, a house loan would you move forward to uh, found the business first to pay off and the debt that you have or would you look to reduce the debt first and then work with a, a business idea so Sean good question and I would probably have to sit with you and talk to you a bit more to get an idea of what would I would advise from, from hearing what you have to say. 
the good thing about it is though applying economic independence is just saying father even in the midst of my debts which is what i had i'm going to push i've got a new mindset that's saying regardless because i apply the scripture that says i owe no man any debt but a debt of love and i began to believe that over my circumstance even if i got myself into the debt in the first place and i stopped limiting god to saying i needed a job in order to pay off my debt. But I said, God, I, I won't limit you anymore. How you want me to get rid of my debt, including a house debt, a house loan debt, is entirely up to you. But I'm gonna go start living the purpose you've asked me to live. And I'm not gonna let money stop me. I'm gonna steward it properly. So it doesn't mean that you forget things and you run away. I'm, I'm all for responsibility. Please don't hang up on your bank manager and not call him and stop paying the loan or anything like that because stuff happens. Hey, Ruben, Ruben said so. Yeah, hey, well, as long as you don't know where I live, it's not from. <laughs> okay, but you know, it's not about that. It's actually about running to your debt collectors and saying, hey, this is my situation uh, and I'm ready to pay back. And that's what I would do with my debt collectors when I went through this stuff. But I didn't have fear anymore. You know how you have this fear, and it's like, I describe it like this a monkey sitting on your chest. You could not even breathe. Okay. And, and what this allowed me to do is get into this mindset that I actually come from heaven. God's got a solution for everything and he knew it before I even began and before even time began because Hebrews 4 says something really interesting. It says that God rested on the seventh day and never worked again. So all the solutions for this world he did before, before day seven. So I said, well, how come Jesus was sent many thousands of years into society? Well, the Bible says even before the foundations of the world, Christ was sent. So it was, he was prepared, everything. So your solution for your problem, it first starts with an agreement that says God's got this and I don't have to try and control this. So anything beyond my control, I'm just going to let it rest in God. And I'm not going to run from my responsibilities, but I'm not going to let it hinder me from what God's called me to do. Does that help? So I know it's not an exact answer but we're not into the place of so I, the lady the other day called me and said i've got two career choices which one's god saying and i said it doesn't matter which one because as long as you do the will of god in that career are you living and reconciling man to god in that career it doesn't matter which career god's you know he, he, he those are in a sense petty things that we start to think about okay oh which um you know which, which car should i buy the blue or the red one means the blood one means salvation it, it doesn't matter i'm gonna say i'm serious people people call me and ask me stuff like that or they ask god stuff like that and and as much as he loves us those are not you know we're sons we're not servants we're not beggars god brought us to be sons so Sean, all I can say to you is that I see in you, um, I see a crown on your head right now. And sometimes the Lord just shows me stuff. And is that okay if I just speak that over your life? Uh, and that crown is sitting on your head and the Lord saying, son, you've got my mind. A and I'm pleased with you, not because of what you do, but because of who you are. Amen. I'm pleased with you, not because of what you do, but because of who you are. And I want you to believe that because everything you do must function out of knowing that you're my son. And you don't have to do anything to please me because I'm already pleased with you. So from that pleasure that I have in you, I want you to start doing. Because you got my heartbeat and that's what I see for you. Okay. Thanks, Ruben. God is good. You're welcome. Any other questions? Herman. Herman Knight. It's not a question. I probably just want to add into that, um, if I may. I know it's over time. Um, look, guys, uh, I don't know where you are in business at the moment, whether you want to start one or you already start, started a business. But um, I saw Ruben's presentation probably almost exactly the same two years ago. And to be honest, we were in a mess, right? And it, today just reminded me again of what we saw two years ago has come um, has come into uh, um, truth, uh, has, has come into reality, right? We were um, probably related to um, Andrew's group question about the debt. We were, um, we were deeply in debt and Ruben and Matthew um, knew what, what we experienced um, before. And look, I've been in business for 10 years now and um, the drive was always financial freedom for me, right? But we didn't understand why we wanted that financial freedom first place 
So it was, it was, it was truly a raw motivation. So we, we went from seminars to seminars. We invested in the, in the, in the um, uh, financial market. We invested in properties and, and then we made wrong decisions. Yeah. So um, we were, we were in debt and, but what, what has happened to us now, um, we, we managed to understand about the process of, of being in debt and how, and how to negotiate with the bank and get out of it. Right. We um, praise the Lord. We, um, we have, we have passed on everything to the bank and, and the bank has commented uh, verbally that um, we, uh, the, the debt will be waived um, uh, in, in this case, right? So, but in terms of um, whether we should do the business and whether, whether we should focus on the debt or the loan, um, just do what your heart uh, tells you to do, right? Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we, we moved to Jakarta about five months ago um, and we believe that God has, has planned it all for us, right? Uh, and he knew exactly how, how to intrigue us by, by a big deal that we're, we're going to happen with KFC in Indonesia. And it didn't, it didn't happen, right? But look, um, not, not, only, not only our business running without us in Australia, we started another business in Indonesia. And just after Ruben left, uh, probably three weeks, four weeks ago from, from Jakarta, we, we had Ruben last month here as well. We, we actually landed a deal with, uh, with Fiji Tourism, right? That, that probably um, worth 10 times than our monthly income. Right, and um, and that's that's probably hundred folds in our average order. Right, so when when you really rest in God, um, your business grows thirty, sixty, hundred folds, and that's 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 truth. Yeah. Right, so um, so that's that's what we experience today. Probably um, from from the second slide that Ruben um, that Ruben shared earlier, I just realized that we we're actually in kingdom philanthropy. Right, we were we were given by God um, the opportunity to look at into social issues now in Indonesia, and Astrid is now um, working on the opportunity to to inspire uh, women in 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 the local final dump to uh, to be entrepreneurs and create things out of the waste. Right, and um, I don't know, Ruben, if you remember a couple of uh, weeks ago, you, you sent a video about about the no food waste movement in, in India and. Uh, and we were actually moved and um, I just con contacted one of the lady that has a food bank in Indonesia, um, she does uh, in Jakarta. So she does, she does uh, similar work, but she hasn't, she hasn't done what exactly uh, we did in, uh, they did in the, in the, in the video. So uh, uh, we will be, we'll be looking into that as, um, as, as we have the heavenly resources ready uh, to, to help working on those, uh, feeding the poor, uh, feeding the needy, and, and one last thing that God has put into my heart is uh, um, that this country has been moved or influenced by the wrong wealth, right? There are too many, too many rich people in this country that, uh, that controls the politics of it. And um, I believe now the job is, uh, is to move those non-kingdom wealth to be kingdom wealth in Indonesia. Amen. That's all. Amen. We give God glory for, for that amazing testimony. That's of it. Yeah. For, <laughs> so for God. Thank you. God is good. Amen. All the time. And all the time, God is good. You know, we thank God for those testimonies. And, and this is not to you see, guys, this is to say two years ago, and now look what God, God has done. Okay. And God can do that for you. You can't, if you want an orange tree today, you want oranges, you got to plant the seed at some point. And today is the best time to plant it. No matter where you are in life, where you are in business. I'm recognizing the time and I'm happy to continue for another uh, till 10 o'clock to finish off another 15 minutes, 10 o'clock, sorry. I'm looking at Melbourne time and I've forgotten you guys are from different time zones. So another 15 minutes I'm happy to be here for, but if anyone needs to leave, we want to honor the time that we were meant to finish and, and, and know that we'll be here the next time. See you, sir, Bruce. Yeah. Can we just wave to Bruce? Can we give him a flying kiss because he's done so well? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I think there's something God's still doing in this place, and it's good to uh, for you to you know, just if you want to uh, give some feedback right now as we finish off, or I have another question based around this. It's really a great time to share and see what God is doing. Rubika, you had a question. 
I um, no more than a question. I want to just uh, reiterate on some of the things that Herman said as well, because uh, around the same time, about uh, for me it was about a year and a half ago, I began to come back into a place of thinking very seriously about uh, building up my business rather than um, allowing it, uh, allowing the fears of failure, the fears of um, of uh, not being able to go through with it. Uh, to keep me from doing this. So I started a one-on-one -on -one coaching with Ruben. And uh, not just because he's my brother, but I really believe, I thank God that God has given him um, principles that have really helped me to come out of the mindset that I had. Um, and also joining up with the monthly uh, KBN meetings that we've been having and hanging around other people who are going through the same issues, who are pushing through into the things that God has for us and realizing that this is what God has for us. Uh, it's not about us and what we want to do and about making ourselves rich, but about um, the mandate that God's given us so that we can be a blessing, so that as ambassadors, we can truly go out there and make a difference um, out there. So the one-on-one -on -one coaching has really helped me because there are times when I come up with an idea or come up with something and I, I need a place to go. I think we've lost Rubika. Okay, she'll be back. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank, thanks, Rubika, uh, for, for, for that. <laughs> I'm just looking at her face stuck there. It's, it's funny. <laughs> I, should, I should run into the house and see if she's actually looking like that. Anyway, um, anyone else want to uh, ha have a question or sharing? And if anyone wants a report, by the way, um, please feel free to email me or text me or let me know. And I'm happy to send that report on uh, the five steps in business. Um, and even the seven rights and responsibilities to be wealthy. So I'm happy to send those to you guys so that you can actually read through that and meditate on that as well, because that, that's a, that would be a big help. Um, so Ruben, I was just going to quickly ask you in regards to um, uh, probably, you know, four or five, maybe yes, five years ago, I started um, researching, um, you know, the difference between being mortgage debt and trusting God to give you the house. Um, and I, I, I and I actually went into a quite extensive research about it. And you know, when I started studying the scriptures, I saw that God actually gave that King David everything he had. I saw He gave Abraham everything he had. I started looking into these characters of the Bible uh, that God actually gave them everything. They didn't actually have to do anything to actually get it. All they had to do was just be themselves. Yeah. And, and I started getting intrigued about this because then I started looking into it further. And then God actually says, don't actually charge my people any interest. Mm. Right? And I thought that was very interesting because I thought, yeah, by the time you end up paying a mortgage, if it's over the traditional period of 25 years, uh, it ends up being at least double what you borrowed. So, you know, I mean, God can lead us to borrow, you know, uh, if there is a strategy in creating wealth in that, mm. you know, if it's a short term thing, I perhaps, you know, so I've, I've kind of like opened my thinking up to that possibility that God can use um, any, you know, any sort of wealth system. But I think ultimately, ultimately, I think God wants to give it to us. Uh, through the kingdom way, you know. Yep. Spot on. You're, you're absolutely spot on. Actually, everything you've said is, it, it's just a matter of do we believe. So from the time I was, just before I was 21 years of age, I was buying property. But my property was always bought by a loan. But I'd always do it in such a way that if I had to sell the property the next day, I would still break even or make a profit. Exactly. Okay, yeah. but... Having said all of that, when I understood the kingdom principles and understood the fact that oh, I could actually, God could give me stuff as I seek for his kingdom, um, that's what I'm living off now. 
I'm just seeing him give me stuff. And we're not talking about me going to a congregation or getting money from people. And, you know, Andrew knows me and knows that we don't, we don't solicit stuff. Like, it's just the ability to be able to see it. And it's just so exciting. And, and you're just saying, and I'd read people like David and I'd read Joshua. For me, it was Joshua when God said, I'm going to give you cities that you did not build. I'm going to give you vineyards that you did not plant. And, and, and I, you know, and then I look at uh, his promise to Jacob and he said, I'm good. as far as the north, the south, the east, the west, all of that belongs to you. Right. And he gave this big, huge promise to Jacob. And Jacob's little thinking was, well, God, if you give me food to eat and clothes to wear, it's like, come on, kid, I'm not going to give you a whole city and keep you naked. You know, I'm yeah. not going to give you vineyards and keep you without food. You know, it just so I think what you said is spot on. God's not angry if we if we take loans and stuff, he's not angry with us. Yeah, exactly. there's, a, there's a better way just that we put ourselves under that pressure. And it's like we take control again, rather than release and go, well, does it really matter if I own a house or not? And I'm going to go seek the kingdom first and, and do whatever God's called me to do, because my home is not here anyway, but I'm not going to be a vagabond. I'm not going to live as a vagabond in, on this earth. I'm not going to live as a servant or a slave on this earth. I'm an ambassador, but I'm not, I'm not investing in here for anything else but souls. And it's amazing what God will do as you're spot on about David, spot on about Abraham. What a blessing. I, mean, I, I remember, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, Creflo Dollar was hmm. believing God for a $60 million plane, hmm. you know, so that he could fulfill the, the ministry calling on his life. Yeah. And he, you know, he received a lot of, a lot of opposition from religious minded people that he didn't need such an expensive plane to fulfill the calling of God on his life. But I don't know how long it took, but he just kept confessing that God wanted to give him this plane. And, you know, it eventually manifested. Yeah. You know, and even Jesse Duplantis, 15 years from the time he received the vision to the time of the manifestation of the, the plane that he received, he just kept believing, kept decreeing, kept de declaring. And it eventually it manifested. So this is actually going another step further. I've actually don't, it's beyond even decreeing and declaring anymore. It's just yeah. the way of life. And it's beyond the big dreams of like, I was in South Africa and, and this pastor said, man of God, you know, from Nigeria, a man of God, you can upgrade to a Ferrari. And I go, why? Because man of God, that's your next stage. And I go, what for? I don't want a Ferrari. It's four hundred thousand dollars. Why? Why do I need a Ferrari? But man of God, and I said, but I could feed, I could feed villages. I could feel whole towns with that money. But man of God, what if God just gave it to you? I said, I'd sell it. I'd buy myself a land <laughs> and I'd lose the rest of the money. Because why would I? I said anyway. In Australia, where I am, you can't even drive <laughs> at a speed that would be worthy for that car anyway. And, <laughs> And my wife and I just looked at each other and we laughed because we've come to this point where in all things we're content yeah. and we're not waiting for the next thing, but we're not sitting, we're not living as vagabonds either. Yeah. We just content, absolute contentment. And my thing is what's the next thing you need. So sometimes it may not be the biggest thing ahead, but what's the next thing you need? If you need your bill paid tomorrow saying, father, I thank you for that bill. I owe no one, anyone, anything but a debt of love. Because sometimes you say, if I can just get away from this, then I can believe for that. And that becomes goal setting. But what you've said is absolutely true. If we start believing, then actually the decree is just that we start living that out, faithing it till you make it. And, and that faithing is just a decree out of your mouth. You know, So it's very exciting, but I thank God for that. A man of God, but it's you. <laughs> I grew up in Nigeria, so I go Nigerian in South Africa. That, that's Bad combination. But anyway, Rubika, you're back. So <laughs> what happened? Sorry, sorry, I didn't realize my battery died. <laughs> battery died. <laughs> <laughs> Bad thing. <laughs> now, I just, I just wanted to say the one-on-one -on -one coaching and the hanging around other people who have the same desire and um, who have who just want to see what God wants here on earth, you know, his kingdom here on earth, that really makes a difference because it changes the way we think and it just helps us to start to move in that direction. Because I, I don't have to perspire 
or I don't have to work for the things that God is giving. I just, uh, as I'm living it, as I see each revelation that he shows through, through um, the coaching, through the meetings, through just talking to Ruben and the others in the group, um, and we start living it, it's just happening. Amen. So I just, I just hope that will be an encouragement to someone out there. Yeah, thanks, Rubika. It's actually good to have endorsement from your older sister as well, who used to boss me around until I got until I got taller than her. But <laughs> so we just to contextualize some of the guys who don't know us that well, um, we actually all live together in one. It's one house with three buildings, if you like, and and so we live everything that we preach about. We actually live at home as well. Because we teach our kids the same things, same principles. We live off the same things. We don't. We have our masks off, and we say to people, "You can. You're welcome to visit us any time, because we will not be a different person to you outside on the webinar or anywhere else than we are inside." Um, so, how you see me dressed is how I'll be at home usually, unless I'm in bed. So, you know, and anyone's welcome. So, because we want to speak the same language, because we belong to the kingdom, and the king. And so, I really thank God for my sister because. Even though she's my senior, she's actually been willing to listen to some of the stuff that I just matured a little bit on in that area. And even though she still tells me off uh, for other areas of my maturity, because I like to muck around as a kid. Um, yeah, no, anyway. Um, so, uh, you know, she's a living testimony of being able to see stuff at home. And then with Herman and Astrid, just love the fact two years from now. And, and that would give you guys that, that ability to say, what happens? What if two years from now God can cause this to happen if you start today, you know, uh, a year from now, six months from now, 10 years from now, even if it takes 10 years, better than what you were 10 years back. If you had planted this 10 years ago, imagine where you'd be today. Okay. And, and the good news is it's not goal setting. We're talking about living purpose. So you just start doing it immediately. That's why we need next in three weeks time. We need another, we're going to come back and do another second part to this because we just need some time to, to, to digest this and be around this sort of uh, atmosphere to let God do what he's doing. Okay. Um, so we're going to kind of finish off there, but uh, BJ, just want to just get some feedback. How did you find today's session? Was that helpful? Yeah, no, it was wonderful. Thank you very much. It's, um, I guess it's just confirmation um, of what the Lord's been sharing to me about he, uh, the walk with him as a son not to strive that it's all been it's all been given at the cross so i just really blessed with tonight and all the testimonies thank you so much amen now you wanted a, you are said that you had some expectation at the start was that meant yes yeah, it was just the com i just believe that lord was confirming what he's been saying to me about you know walking in in business and to to seek him first and all things um, will be added and there's been you know as a um you know, been in business not that long, but the profound things that he's placed in front of me um, were just, you know, they're just astounding. And, um, but there are only, there's more to come. Um, and yeah, it's just wonderful to, to just walk with the Lord and, and, and know that he's the one that weighed the seas and, um, and we're his sons and sons and daughters. So thank you. Amen. BJ, just while we, you were talking, um, so as I said, sometimes the Lord speaks to me prophetically. Do you mind if I just share, and he's doing it through an image right now, so do you mind if I just share with you what he's saying? Yes, that's bless so, you. Uh, there were, there's this image I saw, of, I saw a scepter in your hand, and you know what a scepter is, and it's a golden scepter, and I saw um, a, a robe around you, and I can still see it, but I saw you standing, so you were royalty, dressed in royalty, but you were standing in front of a really old house. Okay. Uh, and, and so I just felt, and as you were standing in front of it, all I could see was your back and you had a crown in your head and it was this kingly look, but you were just like a little bit dismayed and you go, is this my inheritance? Is this what it is? And, and I just felt the Lord say, you know who you are in Christ. You, you've already got that more than most people do. You understand your royalty and who you are in Christ, but you're looking at what you've got in front of you and he's saying, is this all it is? Um, and all I see right now is the Lord saying, just go into the house. Go into that which seems like that's all it is. Because there's a secret chamber, not at the back of the house, but underneath it. And underneath it, there's all these acres of land that are yours. 
and you and and all these resources that are available to do whatever you need to do with it and i feel the lord saying to you that the step that you're taking even though it might seem like you're going backward is actually going to go forward bless you uh is that I just thank you for that. I thank you so much for that, brother. And Father, I just thank you for that word in Jesus' name. Thank you. Lord. Amen. And Father, we just thank you for BJ right now. And we just thank you for the things that you're doing in his life. Thank you for the release that without him in this puzzle, we would not be able to complete the work that you have organized for our generation on this earth. And so we release everything that he's required to do over him today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you, brother. Wonderful. Andrew, over to you. So, what would you like me to say, Ruby? <laughs> well, what would you like to say, Andrew? Yeah. Oh, well, I, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed this evening. And one of my takeaways, again, was a practical question that the other lady uh, started, what was it, Jay Chan? J yep. Just she asked a question about primary and secondary research, research, and I think you'd actually spoken to me about that term before, yeah. and it was kind of good just to hear, give a little bit more clarity around that, because it's, I mean, I haven't spoken to you much about what the Lord's been putting on my heart in regard to a business idea, which I will be, and it'll come out in time. But yep. what was spoken and what you sent me through that uh, the five steps, uh, I actually feel that I'm actually doing anyway. And awesome. so getting that answer to the secondary thing brings a bit of clarity to it. Brilliant. So that was good. Wonderful. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Thank you for I do, have, I do have another little comment, mm -hmm. which I was going to actually talk to you afterwards about, but I'll talk to you now. I felt that we could have gone deeper hmm. with some of the teaching. I, I felt it could have gone a little bit deeper, like it, like it was like we could have gone longer with that and maybe split it up even, to, even more because I felt there was a lot more revelation to bring out of what you were saying. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. just my feedback. Yeah. But it was great. Right. It was good. It was good. Yeah. So, so this was just, yeah, um, absolutely. I think there's a lot in there and I, I'm just a person who can speak for four hours. So I have to restrict myself to time and say, this is the stuff I'm going to talk about. And hopefully, it, you know, it hits home, but absolutely. Um, so we'll, let's revisit it more. And, and if there is, and here's the good news, everything I've said is in the scriptures. And if you've taken screenshots or this recording is going to be available as soon as we finish off here, um, I think within a couple of days, we'll get the link sent off and we can get it to you when you need. But, but you, so you can refer to the slides again, but here's the good thing. With the Holy Ghost, you start to go deeper. And that's what excites me. So absolutely, I'm here if you need to ask questions about things, even the next time we meet together on particular areas. But with the Holy Spirit, we just start to go deeper and deeper. And just like Rubika was saying about the seek first the kingdom of God, nine years and she gets this re an ex another revelation of what the kingdom means. And all of a sudden I'm going, oh, I, you know, Andrew, we were just talking on Monday when we talked together about, you know, I was just telling you the night before God had told me to start with seek first the kingdom of God and to go from there. And I just didn't know what a lot. I mean, I knew that the stuff I knew, but then yesterday at our home church, Rubika shares this and I go, wow, that's exactly, that's it. We're not seeking God anymore because he's already within us. We're seeking kingdom and as we seek the kingdom because he's in us everything's added this is the key to wealth you know so yeah so absolutely we could go deeper but the good news is you're left with the scriptures and with the holy spirit so there's nothing new that that's being taught here it's just um a rediscovering of truth yeah so i hope hope that hope that comforts you guys <laughs> that you're not missing anything because because jesus said the holy spirit will be with us but Let's meet together in three weeks' time. And in the meantime, each of you have come through either, well, those remaining know, know me, but you've come through either myself or Andrew or uh, Bruce or Matthew, and therefore you can just get in touch with us again uh, and tr get in touch with me through them if you have anything else you want to share through the, in the next three weeks or, not or so. 
Uh, Craig, it's good to see you. It's been a while. Thank you. It has been, hasn't it? I just, when I saw your face before when I was in the presentation, <laughs> I'm like, dude! <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw I've that. Been, um, I've, been do, I've been busy doing other stuff. That's why I've been on and off with the, the camera. Okay. I haven't seen you since uh, Southeast about Christmas. About a year now. Sorry? It's probably about a year or so again, isn't it? Is it just a year? Feels like much know. more. Oh, I don't know. It's been a while. Yeah. Anyway, good to have you on board as well. Bless you, man. Yeah, thanks, mate. Bless you. It was good. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we'll say bye for now. Let's just pray before we go. Um, so, Father, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Whichever country we're in, whichever state in Australia, wherever we're, we're at right now, Holy Spirit, even as, uh, yeah, just, just receive the presence of the Holy Spirit just coming into that place of where you need to find peace where you need to find assurance, confidence right now. So if you just close your eyes and just let's let that release come over you. He's within you, but he's just bringing a release over you too. And I'm just sensing that just an atmosphere is changing where you are right now. For some of you, it's just God's releasing even the ability to lay hands on the sick and they recover. For some of you, God just blowing ideas into your mind and it's suddenly you're seeing step two. You're seeing the next step. And for some of you, it's just saying there's peace in the storm today. There's peace in the storm today. So Holy Ghost, we just thank you. We're so grateful that we can just sit together, to just be together with our brothers and sisters. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for these entrepreneurs. Thank you for the impact they're making in their society, in their nation, in their home in their influence around them, their surroundings, because they've chosen to believe in you. Thank you for the blessings that overflow because of Jesus. Holy Ghost, thank you. Father, thank you. Jesus, we give you honor and praise. Thank you. And we just give you all glory tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. We can start church service now. There's a... Hey, God bless you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.